Well, good morning, ladies, and welcome to Learning to Listen. I'm here with my sweet friend, Linda, and I'm Claire, and we are just super excited to come yes. and talk with you today. Uh, we feel we have got a message from the Lord that that we just know it, it, it is his heart, comes straight from his heart art for you ladies you know so we're super excited um just to share with you this morning and and, and you know I'm just I'm overwhelmed by his goodness at this kind of point in my life so much has happened lately that it's just overwhelming like how good God is and you know I've seen some neat little miracles in our family and yes. uh, God doing things and and yeah yeah I'm super excited about Jesus this morning. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and I'm I'm grateful too that you know he he shows us that he's personal. He's a personal God, and I there's been things that have happened over in our life in the past few past month or so that there's no way anybody else would know, but God knew, and he just you know he's just he knows us and he shows us that he's a personal God. Yeah. Yeah. And I love like the little tiny details, you know, like yes. the Lord knows what you need right. in your life to see, uh, to encourage you to keep running the race. And mm -hmm. it's interesting, I think, how often we do need just that little bit of encouragement. Okay. You're on the right track. Keep pushing through, you know, and he gives mm -hmm. us those little things. But I think we have to be looking for them I think and um, right. we have to be aware of what's going on around us we need to stop and take note okay God what are you doing and then we see those miracles you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, that's true mm -hmm. good so well today um, I wanted to just start by telling you a little story um, I met with a wonderful um, young woman a couple of weeks ago now, and, and oh, this girl, she loves the Lord. Like, you know, we'll talk about Jesus and she'll just cry. You know, she has such a longing um, for Jesus. But we were talking about his return and, and longing for his return. And there is a scripture that talks about Jesus's return. And I'm going to read um, that one to you quickly. It's 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. And it says, there's a crown of righteousness waiting in heaven for me. And I know that my Lord will reward me on his day of righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. And this crown is not only waiting for me, but for all who love and long for his unveiling. So there's this crown of righteousness waiting for those who long for his return. And so we were talking about his return. And she said to me, she said, you know, she said a bride longs for her wedding day. She longs for that day when she is married to her bridegroom. And it's all consuming, all encompassing. And just everything goes into that one day, that day of their wedding day, of their marriage. And even now we see it in our own traditions. You know, we spend thousands upon thousands on that day, on our dresses, on, on everything that goes into it because we're longing for that day and we're excited about the day. And so when she said it, it just triggered something in, in me. I said, yes, we need to long for that day, the day of his returning. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's really good. We do. And um, I did a, a study on um, the Jewish wedding because it parallel. There's so much in um, the Jew Jewish tradition. You know, the Bible is a Middle Eastern book. It is not a Western book. Yeah. And so the, even the Dr Jewish tradition for weddings is just, so, it so parallels our walk with the Lord. It's, it's just beautiful. Um, one of the things that um, I, I, uh, was reading is that there are basically two stages of a wedding. First of all is, uh, I'm not going to try to say the Hebrew word, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the first one is a betrothal or sanctification, but setting apart. And then the second one, the second stage is when they actually have the wedding and the consummation. So um, a betrothal happens there's different ways that that um, a husband and wife can come together in the Jewish tradition. One way is um, the parents 
from when the children are little, a, a, an arranged marriage. And another way is that um, that they can that the father can send someone out to find a wife. A father can find a wife for his son. And then another way is just the the man will see someone and he wants to um, marry her. And I think you were going to talk about the uh, one with Abraham. Yes. Yes. Do you, shall I do that now? This just. Be yeah. So this um, the story of Isaac and Rebecca, and it's such a beautiful story because Abraham decides that it is time for his son to to find a bride. And so he calls his senior servant, as he, it's called in, in Genesis, and he says, go out and find a bride for my son. Go back to my people and find a bride and bring her back here for my son. So the servant goes out, goes back to God's people, God's chosen people, and he finds this bride. And what blew me away, I think the most was, this is a depiction of the Holy Spirit. And he goes out and he searches for this bride and he doesn't eat. Like this scripture says that he does not eat. He will not rest until he finds this bride. So he goes out um, and he looks for Rebecca, who's going to be Isaac's bride. And, and there's just this Holy Spirit is going out across the earth looking for a bride. And, and that to me was like, oh my goodness, the Holy Spirit, how he pursues you and me. He's going to come and he's going to bring you back to Jesus, to your bridegroom. And I just love that. And, and so he finds Rebecca and he fasts and he will only break that fast and celebrate once Rebecca has agreed to go back and meet Isaac. And so um, the other thing I loved was that Rebecca's mom went to her and said, please stay another 10 days with me. Don't go yet. And I can feel that as a heart of a mom. No, just spend yeah. a little more time with me before you go. And Rebecca says, no. She says, I am longing to meet my bridegroom. And so she goes off with the servant, the Holy Spirit, to her bridegroom, who is Jesus. And, and that just... You know, we call the Holy Spirit the hound of heaven, how he will he will hunt you down. He will take you back to your bridegroom. And, you know, I think of all my loved ones who don't know Jesus, like the Holy Spirit is going to bring them back to their bridegroom. So I, I love that. So that's the one where um, Abraham organized this uh, marriage for Isaac. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about that is the Father sends Holy Spirit to, to pursue us, yes. you know, he, he, Holy Spirit comes to pursue us on, at the, um, at the command of the father, you know, and so th that, that to me is just, it's so beautiful oh, because he wants, he wants his son to have a bride. And mm -hmm. so I just love that. And so um, the, the next thing that usually happens is um, whenever the, the the man and woman um, come together, the 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 man will go to his um, her father her father's house and offer her a glass of wine and pay a dowry. And now, if she takes the wine, then she has said yes to to this uh, betrothal and a betrothal is a binding contract whenever you know there is a there's an actual um, contract that you sign which shares his role and it also shares her role and things that they will do for each other well whenever we think about that in our our walk with with the lord the bible is does that very thing so whenever we receive jesus and say yes to Jesus, the Bible is that contract. The Bible is that binding contract that shares, um, you know, that, that says what we will do, what's expected of us and what God will do. Yes. And um, there's a significance to the, to the wine as well, to the glass of wine. Yes. I, I love that. I love just, 
I mean, that blows me away. Like the Bible is the contract, which means you can look in the word of God and you can say, this is what he says he will do for me. And it's a binding contract. Yes. Like it just doesn't get any better than that. And yes, the, the wine, I mean, I, I can almost picture it in my mind. If I close my eyes and I can picture Jesus just giving me this glass of wine and, and me taking it and drinking it and saying, yes, I'm saying yes to you. And you know, the parallel that I love with that is communion, the communion cup. When you take that cup you are saying yes to Jesus. It's just the same as that wedding tradition. You are taking that cup and saying, Jesus, I'm saying yes to you and all that you have for me, which is life, you know, eternal life and, 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 and a place with him forever. So yeah, I love I love those two parallels. It, it really hit me about the word of God, though. You, you know, this is this is a contract that I can read and and I can believe what God says about me and what his promises are for me. I, I, I love that. Beautiful. Yeah. Sorry. And the beautiful thing about this, this, this Bible is <laughs> I'm going to, I'm getting teary eyed. <laughs> the beautiful thing about the Bible is, is this, this is a contract that, that God made with us and we didn't reciprocate. We just, we received Jesus and his contract stands no matter what we do, his contract, his, his word is truth. No matter what we do, we, mm -hmm. he's made this contract and he has, he will keep his part no matter what. Yeah. He's, That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Yeah, he is true to his word. He is he's true to his word. Yes. He yes. Go against the word of God. Yeah. Absolutely. Just beautiful. Love that. Uh, and ladies, yeah. it's for you, you know, ladies. Yes. You're the one who, when you do that communion, just think, I'm saying yes to Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. this is for you. The Holy Spirit has come and found you and has taken you back to your bridegroom. And, and you have said, yes, you've taken that wine and you've drunk it and said, yes, I choose you. I choose to be with you. It, it's beautiful. It really is. Yes. Yeah. yes. Once the wine is, once she takes the wine and she, and they've signed the, the contract, um, a dowry is paid. And lots of people have said, you know, it's because a woman was treated as property back then. But, you know, it really is because she was a contributing, um, uh, she was contributing to the family. Um, and she is going to leave that place of contributing to the family and going to another place where she's going to contribute and to another family. So, so the, the husband's family pays, um, gives a gift to the other, to the wife's family because to the bride's family, because there may be a hole left there and there may be someone who has to be hired or, you know, whatever, whatever they need to do to fill her role in that family. And lots of, sometimes um, th th uh, the father will give part of that dowry to the, to the bride uh, for her to uh, do whatever she um, wants to with it. But, you know, th then gifts are given to her. Gifts are given from the, um, from the bridegroom to her. And um, par parallel that with our life with the Lord, Holy we, when we receive Jesus, we are given the gifts of the Holy Spirit, yeah. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Yeah. Those are the gifts that we are given whenever we receive Jesus. Yes, yes. And even with when you look back at the same story of, of Rebecca, like the servant put bracelets on her wrists and he, mm -hmm. he gave her gifts, you know. <laughs> The Holy Spirit does. He he gives us gifts in the parallel there once again. It is it, he gives us every good thing, every yes. good perfect gift, you know, comes down from the Father. And, and and then the neat thing is, is that's in our contract. That's in the yes. word God, you know, that's how yes. we can look and say, this is what God is giving me because I am married to the bridegroom. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and you know, the dowry that was paid for us was the blood. Yeah. Was Jesus paid with his own blood. Yeah. And you know, I think about that. Yeah. That, that's it's everything that he could have given. Yeah. Absolutely. Beautiful. And so yeah. Whew, give me a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> you know he gives us gifts but he also paid for our he paid for us he paid and he he paid the price that and and you know it was a price that was way beyond what we could ever pay or could ever give or could ever do and so you know he paid the price for us and and then what happens after that is um he the bride the groom will go back to his father's house and he will prepare the honeymoon chamber for his bride. And the father is the one who decides when, when it is finished and when he's coming back. And so during that time, it, and I read in, in one place, at least sometimes a lot of times that's a, could be a year. So the, the bride is waiting all that time. And during that time, she is preparing for her bridegroom to come. And um, it's just a beautiful parallel to where we are right now, where we're waiting for yeah. our bridegroom to come. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And Linda, you have a scripture that goes with that too, right? Um, yes, it's John 14. Uh, <laughs> let me... Um, Bear with me just a minute. John 14, 3. I better pull it up on my phone. John 14, 3 talks about this very thing where one through three, actually, where he has gone to, says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. <laughs> Which is just beautiful. Even though he is preparing that room right now we've said yes and he is preparing that place for us and and he's going to come and get us and bring us back to that place that he has prepared and I, I love that you know when 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 we're going to experience that day that we long for the day yes. that we are preparing for you know yeah yeah yes, yes. and um the the what happens after that is the, the bridegroom will bring his bride to the honeymoon chamber and they will spend seven days, anywhere from three to seven days. And that's when they spend time getting to know each other. They consummate the marriage. They, they spend that time together just, you know, dreaming or whatever, you know, about what their lives are going to be like. And then after that seven days, they come out to a marriage feast mm. and everybody celebrates with them. And then, you know, and it's such a picture of the marriage supper of the lamb when Jesus comes to get us. And I think this scripture, and I'm going to badly paraphrase it as the marriage feast of the lamb. Where the bride has made herself ready. And yes. That's the key part because, you know, the bridegroom is doing his part right now. He is preparing a place for us mm -hmm. and he's waiting for his father to say okay go go and get your bride and bring her home it, it's ready we're ready for this you know and, and so in the meantime we've got to be the ones preparing ourselves for his return and and you know that preparation Linda had said earlier is it you know it, perfume like anointing yourself with perfume making yourself beautiful 
and then the bridegroom comes and, and you even, you know, the story of Esther, she took nine months to do that. Um, yes. to, it's ready just to see the king. And, and so we need to be getting ready. We need to be reading that marriage contract, the word of God and seeing what it says. We need to be, you, you know, talking to the Lord. We, I, I love it. There's a scripture that I had looked up um, and it's one that you really know well. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. And that's our part right now. We need to be diligently seeking the Lord. We need to be like the five wise uh, virgins who put lamp in their oil so that when he came, they were ready to go and, and they could find their way, you know. Yeah. It's our part in, in this beautiful wedding that that is being prepared for us for that day. So we need to be yearning, longing for that day, you know? Um, and I I think, you know, there is a scripture that, that says he has put eternity in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We need to ask God to put that longing and for that day. We need to long for it just like a bride, just as I remember planning for my wedding. I was super excited oh, yes. to say, and then the nerves and the I wanted it to be perfect. To, you know, I longed for that day, the day of his returning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. I want to read a scripture in um, 2 Corinthians 11 too, which I just think is, it's just a beautiful scripture in this whole, um, this whole thing of the, of Christ and our, us as, a, as his bride. Um, in 2 Corinthians 11 too, it says, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ. So that I might present you a pure virgin to him. A bride without a, a spotless bride. Yes. And he, as long as and and as long as we present ourselves to him, he will do the work. He will change us. He will make us into that spotless bride, into that virgin to be presented to Jesus. Love it. Love it. You know, one of the other traditions and that culture was uh, forgiveness the day yes. of the wedding was called a day of forgiveness or yom kippur and it was called a dawning day a new day a new dawn and the bride and groom they would fast that day and then all the sins when they did the ceremony all their sins were forgiven all the sins of the bridegroom and of the bride they erased on their wedding day and then they break the fast when they have the feast you know and, and that's just like us you know he we are that spotless bride because we are forgiven forgiven through the blood of christ which we accepted and so yeah yeah beautiful such a beautiful picture such a beautiful picture and so um as we're getting ready to close we just want to encourage you with this with this picture of how, you know, of Jesus being our bridegroom and what he does, what he's doing to prepare for us and, um, and how for us, our part in it is to prepare ourselves to meet our bridegroom yeah. and to be having eternity, the thoughts of eternity in our heart, the, the longing for eternity in our heart, the longing to be with our bridegroom in our hearts and living like we're longing for that. Yes. And absolutely. so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, <laughs> I know for me, this has just been really a powerful yeah. study. Um, yeah. And so we just want to, we want to thank you for listening. And I just want to take a minute to pray yes. and um, Lord, I just want to thank you so much for showing us your love for us. Even in this picture where um, with the bridegroom that as you are of you as our bridegroom and Lord, what that looks like and Lord, what we look like as bride to you. So Father, the love that Jesus, the love that you have for us and Father, I thank you that you are 
sending Holy Spirit out to pursue us, to find us, to to bring us into um, that place of uh, oneness with Christ. I thank you, Lord, and I honor you. And I just pray, Father, that it, that this story, that this um, under, would bring a new understanding of who you are and, and of eternity and of you being our bridegroom would bring a new understanding to our hearts. Um, um, in Jesus name, we thank you. Amen. 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 So this week, ladies, just remember that, that you are the bride of Christ and that the Holy Spirit, as Linda said, is pursuing you to bring you back to Jesus. So have a beautiful week and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.